How to find the hottest and best virtual wholesaling markets in under five minutes. What is up guys, Zach in here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly, efficiently, and with the greatest speed, find the best markets for virtual wholesaling real estate. And most importantly, find the top wholesaling real estate markets anywhere in the country in under five minutes. That is right. I'm going to show you guys exactly the secrets that I have on finding the best wholesaling real estate markets, especially for virtual wholesaling, the top zip codes, the top areas, the top cities, the top counties, anywhere. If you want to go find the best spots for virtual wholesaling real estate, this is going to be everything you need to know on finding everything for wholesaling real estate success. Uh, let's get into it. If you want to go out here and find the best virtual wholesaling markets in under five minutes, under two minutes, whatever you want to do it, day six here, the challenge, let's get into it. So I want to start off with a very important quote. I think this is very important for everybody uh, watching this right now, but uh, this is actually a, this is actually a Warren Buffett quote. And I think it's probably one of the most powerful quotes um, you can ever know. And this is exactly what we're talking about today. But sometimes it's not how fast you row your boat. It's how fast the stream is going. And what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this quote? Basically, what I mean by that is you could be in a boat right now, which is wholesaling real estate, and you could be rowing as hard as possible. You could be rowing crazy hard. Oh, I'm going as crazy as possible, rowing the boat, trying to wholesale, cold call, pull this, do everything. But if I'm in the wrong stream and you know you want the current going down or you're going against the stream, I don't care how tough or good of a rower you are, you're not gonna be a good, like the boat ain't gonna go far, okay? Like the conditions are that bad. And maybe, possibly, it's not how hard you're rowing the boat. You could be rowing the boat as hard as possible, the stream ain't going, it ain't going. Maybe you need to go to put the boat in a different stream. And what I mean by this is a different virtual wholesaling market, right? Some of y'all are trying really hard and really bad virtual wholesaling markets, and you're like, oh, I, I suck. I'm a terrible wholesaler. I can't do anything right. And, and no, no. All right. Like th that ain't it. All right. What it really truly comes down to is being in the right market. And a lot of wholesalers out here are in the wrong wholesaling real estate markets. And what I want to do is show you exactly how to find the top markets possible and how to have that wholesaling real estate success. So let's get it going and let's get it. I'm telling you guys, it's not about how fast you row the boat. Sometimes it's about how the stream is going. Now you obviously want to always row fast, but I'm just telling you guys, got to get into it. So how do I find the top hottest wholesaling real estate markets, right? Today's video, we are going to go over how to find the hottest markets for virtual wholesaling real estate. We are going to row in the best river stream possible today. That is the point of this video. We are going to show you how to row in the right part of the boat, more or less, if that makes sense, guys. Uh, we're going to show you exactly how to row in the best river stream. And so what makes a great virtual wholesaling market, in my personal opinion, it comes down to two key factors. Deals to wholesalers ratio and what I call the teenage success factor. So let's talk about these things, okay? Number one, deals to wholesalers ratio. This might seem like a crazy, weird topic. I know I'm going fast, uh, you know, going through this, but it's true. A good virtual wholesaling market there's going to be a ton of real estate deals, but then you got to be careful because yeah, sometimes there's a lot of great deals, but there could be a lot of could be a lot of wholesalers too. And so this is something we have to understand here in virtual wholesaling real estate. I can give some examples, but like if I'm in a market like Houston, Texas, for example, where there's I, I've always been quoted by saying this, and this is absolutely true. There's probably more wholesaling real estate deals being done in Houston, Texas, than arguably any other city in the United States. It's it, Houston's massive, but here's the problem. Houston's the fourth biggest city in the United States, fourth or fifth, I think, uh, by population or Harris County or the county. I, I get that wrong, but it's massive. Okay. The county or the city is like third or fourth biggest in the whole country. Okay. And so it's huge. So there's a ton of wholesalers. A Houston crowd can vouch for me here. There's a lot of Houston guys and a lot of Houston guys and gals. And there's a lot of deals though, right? And so the ratio is good, but there's so many wholesaling deals that might be the most attractive, but there's a ton of wholesalers. And so it's not a bad market at all, but there's a lot of deals, but there's also a lot of wholesalers. And so that ratio is, eh, it's not bad, right? But if you go to a market, like I've always said, Fayetteville, North Carolina, where there's just not enough wholesalers and there's a lot of deals where there's a ton of deals. It's like Houston's got like a one-to-one -one ratio, I'd say. Fayetteville has way less deals, but there's like these many wholesalers. And so that ratio is way better. And so there's more deals per wholesaler it makes it easier. 
Now, that doesn't say Houston, you, you could easily be seven figures in Houston if you get really, really good. But what I mean by this is we want to find areas where there's a lot of deals and there's not a ton of wholesalers, right? And, and, like not a ton, but like it's a ratio, right? We want a good amount of deals and not a ton of wholesalers in there. And so the next part here is what we call the teenage success factor. What is the teenage success factor? This has been a patent pending uh anti-guru system that I've kind of figured out and no one else talks about this, but this is my monkey see monkey do attitude on wholesaling real estate. That's kind of weird, but it's true. I have found a ton of teenagers and I'm calling them teens because they're 18, 19, 17 years old that they live in New York city, LA, right? Phoenix. And they just start virtually wholesaling in this new market. And I'm not calling them, you know, you know, young, uh, young and broke, but most of them are young and broke, which isn't a bad thing. They got hustle, but they don't know much about wholesaling. Like they just kind of went off TikTok and they're just kind of doing stuff willy nilly. And they're not even that, they're just being honest. I'm not calling it up, but they're like, they're, they suck at wholesaling, but they end up doing deals. I'm like, you suck at wholesaling, but you're doing deals. Like what's going on? You must be in a really good market where there's a lot of deals to wholesaler ratio is really good. And so how do I find this, right? I'll break down a little more about today, but like the biggest one to find is just people flexing, right? And so I'll tell you this, Severville, Tennessee, a couple of years back was one of the best wholesaling virtual markets I've ever done. I found a lot of kids doing 10, $15,000 deals there. And I'm like, these kids don't know jack squat about wholesaling. And I'm, I'm pretty good at wholesaling. I'm like, how? It's just because the market was so good. I went in there, cleaned up because I was actually really good at wholesaling. And so that's another part I, I would say about finding the next great virtual wholesaling market that nobody ever talks about. Look at that teenage success, bleh, teenage success factor. And so let me give you some examples today. Okay. So one example here, this is Knoxville, Tennessee. All right. In Knoxville, Tennessee, this is a good market example. There is a lot of deals and there is a ton of buyers in Knoxville, Tennessee, college town, great population, Eastern Tennessee, great area, right? There is a lot of beginners having success in Knoxville. It's a great Southern people are nice. Prices are relatively cheap, right? And there's, I would say there's a great ratio of wholesaling deals and saturation of other wholesalers. Uh, the population is very nice. It's about 192,000. Then the average home is about 324, but the average wholesaling deal is going to be under 200K on this, right? And so I would say that is a good wholesaling real estate market for virtual wholesaling. Now, this used to be a lot better, right? But I'll tell you, it's still amazing, right? It, it, it's a great market. It's a great virtual wholesaling market. Now, let's look at a bad example. Okay. Northern Virginia, Fairfax County. Okay. Now Fairfax County, there's a lot of buyers, like a ton of cash buyers in Northern Virginia, Fairfax County, but there's a low amount of deals. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by deals? I mean, properties you can get under contract for at least a 15, 20% discount. Okay. That, that's kind of what I mean by deal. There's actually a low amount of people out here that will sell their de deal for a discount. They're a piece of real estate. And there's a ton of wholesalers. And so we have a lot of wholesalers and we have a low amount of deals. That ratio looks off, but there's a lot of buyers. Of course, I mean, yeah, of course, it's a very high demand area. We look at the population, it's about 1.1 million. That's insanely big. And the average home price is about $700,000. And so you don't have to be an expert to kind of figure out what, what's, why is the other market good and why is this one bad, right? Like we're, we're, we're starting to see some examples here. Like, okay, this, this kind of is making some sense, right? And so... The question here is what happened, right? What, why was one so much better than the other? And what I found in my seven years of wholesaling real estate, that it's really come down to two main factors, I would say population and average home price. And I hate to be like, just so like, it's, it's just, this is it. Right. But like, it's not, but I would say just on like a two, you get to two or five minutes to figure out if you have a good market or not. I just have to look at those two things. We're like, I'm just being completely honest with you. No other person in wholesaling real estate ever talks about this huge secret that I have here, but this is my secret. And I could charge you thousands of dollars for this, but you know, guru slayer, like I gotta get rid of these gurus, right? I gotta give it all for free for you guys, right? If you can look at a place with a high population, there's a lot of buyers, right? And if you have a price, you can get good discounts. That's my little secret here. I mean, I, I don't think it's anything crazy, but like that is it. So let's talk about this for a second. Okay. Let's really talk about this population. Let's talk about this population wise, right? A high population. So that's one factor population. I have found in wholesaling real estate and every expert wholesaler can agree with you. The higher the population, the higher the population, usually higher the amount of cash buyers. And this is probably one of the truest statements I've ever found in wholesaling real estate, but 
more people will live in an area. There's a higher demand for rentals. More people, if a lot of people live in a place, there's a demand for people wanting to live there, which means if I live in, I don't know, Oregon, or you know, I, I live in Maine or New York, and there's like Atlanta where it's nice and warm there, right? It's got a great culture and there's a lot of great working opportunities. I probably might wanna move there with my family and buy a house there, right? So if I'm looking to flip houses, that'll be a great area. And if there's a lot of good opportunity for work, there's gonna be a lot of rentals there, right? And everyone knows that about Fulton County, Atlanta area. That's, it's true, right? And so there's a high population and the higher the population, usually there's more cash buyers. And obviously those are people buying our deals. We want a lot of cash buyers, right? And unfortunately, if we have a low population, there's going to be less buyers. I mean, that's, it's pretty much self-explanatory, right? Supply and demand. If I had a pizza shop, I'd probably have more customers in Miami than I would in Louisville, Texas with 3,000 people living in it, right? There's more people that are looking to like pizza in a bigger city. So same thing, high population, high cash buyers, low population, low buyers. Now I've personally found, right? You can do big metros like Houston. I would call it a big metro and there's a lot of buyers there, but I've personally found the sweet spot. So when I mean sweet spot, I want to find areas where there's a lot of deals and lower populate. Sorry, there is, there's high deals and less population of wholesalers, right? So a good wholesaling deals to wholesaler ratio. The sweet spot I have found is about at minimum 50,000 people living in a city. And for the county, at least 100,000 people for the county. That's going to be my bare minimum for most people. Now, oh, my city has 5,000 people in it, but my county has 500,000. Okay, that worked. Because there's tiny cities in big counties, right? And there's big populations of people wanting to buy there, right? So I would say this is going to be roughly my range, all right? Just make sure that your county has at least 100,000 people in it in your virtual market. And I would prefer the city have a population of 50,000, but if the county's got 100,000, that's fine. Right. And you might be in a county where the population of the county is 50,000 and there's 49,000 people living in the city. That's fine. But I would tell you that you just got to be careful out here. Okay. And that's really my spiel on population. That's what I've personally found. Let's talk about price. Okay. When I'm talking about price here, where am I getting at? Right. So for median home price, I've personally found the higher the price, the higher it is to get a bigger discount. I mean, that's pretty standard. Okay. That's how human beings work. I found the lower, the, pr unfortunately though, the lower average median home price, the lower contract price on average, the lower your assignment fee is going to be. And so it's kind of a weird little push and pull, right? The, the bigger price on a deal, I'm probably going to make more assignment fees, but it's harder to get a discount, right? The lower price, the lower you're going to get the assignment fees. My personal opinion, I have found the sweet spot for wholesaling real estate for median home price is between 75,000 and 300,000. The max I would say is 400,000 for the median home price. And I just threw a bunch of information at you, but let me tell you this. So this is information, got to pay a lot of money for that I'm giving to you guys. So don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Just, F just FYI, go to freelson.com. But what I mean by this is if I have a million dollar home, okay? The chance of me getting a 20% discount off that million dollar home, so buying it for 800,000 is way less than somebody to sell their $100,000 house for 80,000. Human beings are weird. They, they don't look at the percentage. They look at the price. $200,000 discount? No way. $20,000 off? Eh, I could do that, right? And this is just for speeding convenience for a lot of things, right? So for example, would you, would you overpay for a car? Probably not, right? If I know roughly a car is worth 20 grand, would I pay 30,000 for it? Knowing I could go somewhere else and get that same car for 20 grand, like a, I don't know, a Nissan Passat, right? Or a Honda Civic, like, no. Like I'm not gonna overpay 10 grand for a car. That, that's stupid. Most people aren't gonna do that. But I, I, I you know, I'll, I'll make fun of some of my family members and me sometimes. We pay five bucks for a um, pumpkin spice latte that you can make at home for like 50 cents. Oh, of course I'll overpay for it. It's only four bucks extra and it's a great pumpkin spice latte, right? You'll look, because the price is so cheap, right? But when it comes to a lot of things, you're less likely to overpay or take a big discount on something when it's bigger. Would you sell your $30,000 car for 20 grand? Most people aren't willing to do that, right? But if you have a $10 tennis racket and somebody offers you seven bucks for it, you'll take it all day, right? Because human beings don't care about percentages. They care about the price of what they're taking. Three bucks off, fine, take it. 10 grand off, no way. And obviously people sell their properties for discounts in wholesaling real estate. But what I mean by this is the higher price point we're talking about, 
the less likely someone's willing to take a big disc. That's how it works. Now, people still are willing to take discounts on three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar houses, but they're less percentage percentage discounts. That's why my MA of formula is it's a sliding scale. And that being said, we gotta understand that. Now, everyone's like, okay, well, I want to go to a place where the average house is 50 grand, right? And Yes, you will get great percentage discounts and you'll get a lot of deals. But the issue here is your average deal is going to be five, six, seven thousand dollars. Now, my local market, the average house is like 380, 390. And, you know, I'm dealing with properties that are like 280, 300. And it's a lot bigger than 50 grand. So my average assignment fee is 30, 40 grand. That's insane. And obviously, you know, it's that again, I'm going to, I'm going to get the best deals. But you have to understand there is a push and pull for this. And once you understand this, that like, okay, I don't want to get the cheapest property possible, right? Because I'm going to have lower assignment fees, but I don't want to get way too high where I can't get discounts, right? I personally found the sweet spot here between 75,000 and 300,000. It's up to you which one you think's best, but I would tell you that's probably uh, going to be your best bet here, okay? I, I would say it's going to be your best bet. Now, I'm going to give you Zach Ginn's secret method to finding the best virtual wholesaling deals. Now, I'm I get in trouble. You know, I got to sell a course on this, but I ain't going to. This is the best way to find the best virtual wholesaling markets. I can tell you right now, finding a good virtual wholesaling market is the same thing as gold mining or oil mining, right? We have to find where new wholesalers with no knowledge and no money are having success and we're going to copy them. All right. That is it. Why do people not go to uh, the hilltops of Kentucky and start trying to dig for oil? I'm going to go oil mining in Kentucky. Hate to tell you, Kentucky ain't the um, uh, the oil mining capital of the world, okay? Kentucky's great for a lot of things, but like, you don't think of oil in Kentucky, right? I ain't going to Florida to go uh, dig for oil. I'm probably going to go mine for oil or drill for oil in places where people do decently well. Alaska, North Dakota, Texas, right? M- makes sense, right? So that, that that's the truth. You in wholesaling real estate, you don't want to be the guy that's going to be like, okay, I'm going to find this new place where there's a new gold rush. You're, you're going to have to, it's a crapshoot. And if you get the wrong one, you're screwed. So if I want to be a gold miner, I'm probably going to go to Alaska where there've clearly been a lot of gold there. And I'm going to strike it rich doing that, right? I'm not going to go try to go to uh, Atlanta, Georgia and be like, there's a Atlanta. I know there's gold everywhere in Atlanta. I'm going to try to dig and mine for, now. Okay. You got to find relatively where people have already done wholesaling deals. Because if somebody's already done wholesaling deals in that area, you could probably go out here and get a deal yourself there too. Like monkey see, monkey do. We're not going to go try to invent a new market, right? We want to go somewhere someone's at least doing some deals, right? I mean, I think it makes sense to me, but uh, that's kind of what we're doing here on this strategy. Okay, so how do I find the best virtual wholesaling markets? We want to find people that are, quote, flexing. Okay, we, we, we want to find people that are flexing in a city. All right, these are new wholesalers, right? And roughly what I've always found, these are Facebook groups, right? Where people are just posting it, Instagram, all these things. You want to find at least two or three people posting about a city and be like, okay, if these kids are doing well in the city, I can do the same thing, right? Oh, I just got this deal in, you know, Bettendorf, Iowa. I'm like, okay, I got three kids bragging about Bettendorf, Iowa. That's crazy. I got to figure out how to do that. Bettendorf, Iowa. All right. And guess what? I see two or three kids. I'm like, okay, if they're doing well, I could probably do well there too. That's it. You guys got to remember, if it's working for newbies, I promise you it will go out here and work for you. All right. That's my big secret here. Okay. That's, That's my big massive secret for finding these deals. Like, Find where new kids are doing deals. Kids love to brag, right? And so go do it, right? That's the secret, guys. So how do you find the best zip codes in areas for wholesaling, right? I'll be honest with you. About four ways to find the best zips and area codes for wholesaling real estate. So these are them, okay? Number one, ask your cash buyers. This is the most, in, in my opinion, tried and true system out here for finding the best cash buyers is just going out here and pulling a list of where the best wholesaling areas are, and you'll find your buyers there, right? Like where most of the wholesaling deals are, you'll find your buyers there. Flip the switch, flip the switch. How do I find the best areas? If I don't know the areas, I know where the deals are. Just ask your buyers. Once you get buyers, right? You cold call cash sales or four rents. Say, Hey, Mr. Cash buyer, where are you looking to buy? Oh, I'm looking to buy in this zip code. Okay. Well, boom. I'm looking for three twos or two ones in that zip code. There are customers are the one buying our deals, right? So we just ask our buyers where they're looking to buy. And that's a great area, most likely, because they're willing to buy it there. And zip codes, 
It's called uh, reverse wholesaling. Where you find the buyer first, then you market in the areas that they want. It's good, not bad. Next year, you can ask title companies. Now, obviously, if you more deals, it'd be a little nicer to you about this, but this is another way to do it. Just ask your title company, hey, where are the best areas you are seeing wholesaling deals being done with the title company, right? And they'll tell you, oh, this area is good, this area is not. Uh, so if you aren't having any success with these, these last two strategies are probably gonna be amazing for you. But number one, find where the rental properties are. Follow the numbers, follow the data. This is a great strategy I've always found. But find where the rental properties are right now. And how do I find where rentals are? Go to Zillow and find where most of the working class rentals are, right? Thousand a month, 1,500, 2,000, whatever it is. That would be the best way to do it. And then my last secret sauce method, crazy I'm even saying this, but this is the truth. The best areas for wholesaling real estate are what we call, quote, the affordable working class housing. What is affordable working class housing? These are gonna be older homes with low crime rates. That is it. I, I, I've i been in so much trouble for saying this a million times, but like it, gurus don't like that I reveal it. But the best areas for wholesaling have always been working class housing. And what I mean by this, if you have an area that, where like I'm, you know, I have friends cause I'm 23 that are 23, 24, 25. And you know, they got their girlfriends, they're engaged and they're looking to, you know, get a house and buy it. That's the American dream. And they can't afford, right? I mean, they're, they're getting started right in their careers and they'll go up, but like they can't afford a $4 million house. All right. Like they need a house, a starter, they call them starter homes, right? And starter homes are cheap real estate that is actually in a nice area. People wanna live in cheap houses that is very safe, right? And these are where these affordable working class houses are, right? Car mechanics, salespeople, I mean, some salespeople live in nice houses, but like, you know what I mean, right? Working class people. And so these type of people will live in houses that are starter, that are pretty cheap. They get nice FHA loans are. The houses are usually older. And so in my personal market, these houses, cause Port St. Lucie is not that old. These are houses from the sixties and seventies that in the fifties that are really old, right? And they need some renovations, right? But you know, they can fix them up. And this is where a lot of people are. And these are good areas. These are not high crime areas at all. And so it's very attractive for wholesalers because it's cheap. They're little smaller houses, right? They're about 1,000, 1,200 square feet. As me, I'm a little taller. So it's uh, the ceilings are always really low for some reason. I guess people are shorter in the sixties. I don't know. You know, they have not built these houses for taller people, but it's weird. But like these are, those are usually what those older houses are. Lower ceilings, um, popcorn, right? They're not updated, but these are great wholesaling real estate markets um, and areas in your virtual wholesale market to be going after. And so look them up. They're great to be going after. And I found good, good success. Now I've, I've also found good success on houses built in the 2000s too, right? 2000, you know, 10, 11, 12. I, I've done that before, right? So it's all up to you, but those are the secret good areas that I found and then rentals in those areas too. Usually because you can flip the houses for a good profit for FHA, a lot of wholesalers um, can sell the buyers really easy there, right? And so what is my homework for today? What, what am I telling you guys to do today, right? Honestly, I want you guys, if you wanna have success, put a 30 minute timer, if you're looking to find a virtual wholesaling market, put a 30 minute timer, and I want you to start that timer and then go for 30 minutes and then find your next virtual wholesaling market. So if you haven't found a virtual wholesaling market, you got 30 minutes to find the market. You know why? A lot of you guys will sit down and analyze for months and months and months and months and months how to find the perfect virtual wholesaling market. Now, we, 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 we ain't playing that game right now, okay? You're gonna go find a good market in 30 minutes. That's all it takes, all right? And so you can look up the populations of a county and look at this whole spreadsheet and then analyze which ones are over 100,000. Then we can find the median home prices around the country and then find one where at least the county's population is 100,000 and the median home price is below 300, maybe 400 if you wanna get crazy. That's my homework for the day. And you might be like, Zach, easy for you to say, I'm, I'm not good at computers. And Okay, you're watching this video, let me help you out. All right, this is another, uh, guys, I put the guru slayer behind me, so I gotta give you some insane value today. Okay, for free. So this is a good one. This is home prices per county. Now you might want to screenshot this. Conveniently, freewholesaling.com is in the middle of it. <laughs> you know what I got to do. But this is home prices per county. And so basically the darker is going to be more expensive and then the lighter is going to be the least expensive. And so if we can roughly see what counties we can go after here, they're nice, right? And so it's not a perfect scale, right? But what I could tell you is you, you roughly see where you don't want to wholesale and where you do want to wholesale. So if I want to, like you see the Northern Virginia area right here, 
that's a little like too purple, right? You see Eastern Massachusetts, but like you see Pennsylvania, you see Philly, that's uh, okay. But like you see all of mid and Western Pennsylvania, those are good areas. Got Pittsburgh right there. You go to Ohio, right? You see that. So like, let's say for example, I'm looking here, let's go around here, boop, 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 boop. And I see, for example, I see Michigan, right? There's some really good areas in Michigan that are a little darker, but I gotta see if the population's good. Now, if I go to Indiana, I see some areas in Indiana that are a little higher, but if the populations are high, that's a great area, right? And so you gotta see here, right? Um, they got a little more expensive areas in Atlanta, but like Alabama's pretty good. The darker parts of Alabama are amazing, right? Mississippi, right? You're looking here. These are great areas for wholesaling real estate. Now, Colorado ain't looking too good, right? You kind of look in the West. It's, it's insane how expensive it is out there, but like there's still pockets where you can do well. And so that's going to be the, like, if I look at Nevada here, the, the lightest part of Nevada, probably not a lot of people live in there. So I don't want to do that, but like take a quick screenshot of this really quick. So you get some data. Uh, but honestly, the orange is probably the most you want to be area. And that's going to be where you're going to find your next wholesaling real estate deal. So you got the pound. Counties price per county. Next year, we just got to figure out what the populations are and we should be good for wholesaling real estate success. So guys, that's pretty much it on this end. Uh, I can tell you right now, make it simple. Don't be complicated. You got 30 minutes. Go after here and find it. That is your homework for today.